fixing an error with an error exactly. with another error. <laughs> and then it just started getting lower and lower and lower and it was hitting the bottom of the screen. Welcome back to the channel guys. Kerry Gray here today in the studio at Pitch Golf based in London here. Two amazing facilities. Standing next to me is Gary Munro. Gary, thanks for coming along. Thank you for coming down. Gary is a top 50 UK golf coach and the director of instruction here. Amazing two facilities to work on your golf game. And today we're gonna to be running through some key elements that you can implement into your golf swings, some great little outcome-based exercises and drills that could really upgrade the level of your ball striking. Let's get in. So without a doubt, the biggest factor determining start line direction of the golf ball off the club face, yep. right? And we see it with an 85% influence with driver yep. and decreases gradually um, as we move through the bags. At the moment, we've got seven iron here with this gentleman, right? Yep. Is uh, the club face orientation right? will dictate to a, a high degree of where that golf ball starts, correct? Correct. Yeah, absolutely. And this gentleman over here on the left-hand side, we can see that his club face, right up there in the top left there, certainly doesn't look like what we would see with the average professional golfer. Correct. Now, this was a recent lesson, right? This guy was struggling with really low shots and he was hooking around his left ankle like he's not <laughs> Yeah. And for the life of him, he was trying to swing further and further out to the right, just yes. really wasn't happening for him, right? And he's, as soon as he started swinging out to the right, he started hitting a couple of Jose Marias and this little GC quad started to get in a little bit of trouble, didn't yeah. it? So, Giving this player some education around club face was the first step. And once he had uh, made the assumption, because most players, they do think that the ball goes where they swing. Yeah, the path, they, yeah. they always think that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because most other sports, right, generally the simplification is like you swing up to hit up. Yeah. You swing to the right to go to the right. Yeah. But the club face in golf, which is the main mass or the main edge hitting the ball has such an influence over that, right? So at the end of the day, if you can get your club face reasonably lined up with your target. You could be a pro golfer if you do that. Golfer. Yeah, yeah. If you get your path in your face and yeah. <laughs> so within reason, if we can get our club face, right, neutral or somewhat neutral throughout the swing, but more importantly, neutral to his wrist angle, yeah. which is key, right? And this is where a lot of players, when they view a professional swing, they go, okay, well, the gentleman over here on the left, right, his club face is pointing up to the sky in this direction. Yes. And we can see the professional model pointing more on this sort of angle, which is on about a 45 degrees, and it kind of goes out in this Correct. direction. Yeah. So funnily enough, that angle is reasonably comparable to that one. Correct. Okay. Now, a lot of that is a function of grip. Yeah. Right? We can see over here on the left-hand side, this gentleman's, God, it's almost 90 degrees to that. Yeah. So a lot of that is a function of grip and for most players, the only grip that they look at, or the only hand they look at, is the front hand, or the yeah, left hand for the right hand. hander, yeah. not the trail hand. But the trail hand, relative to their golf swing move, has a huge influence on that, doesn't it? Massive influence. Yeah. So this player, he was hooking everything to try and send the ball further right. Occasionally he got it, but he didn't. He was shanking everything because he didn't understand that the root cause of the problem was the club face. Yes. Right? Now, if his club face was in this orientation, for example, and he had a bowed wrist, right? So a wrist angle that kind of looked like this. Yeah. Well, then he could probably get away with it. Correct. Because that means it's neutral. But you can see there's such a differing angle of his wrist relative to the club face. Yeah. There. So talk me through the conversation that you had with this gentleman because he just maintains that close club face all the way down. It's super shut as it gets into this position. And yeah. he's just for the life of him trying to save it from there, correct? Yeah. Right. So talk me now through uh, the process that you went through, the understanding, and then the drill and the exercise to. Uh, work on this right hand grip. Okay, so in his actually lesson, we started, he, he complained that he's been hitting the ball too low mm -hmm. and that his golf ball has been running out too much. Now it's firm summer conditions, it's great, everyone can hit their drives a long way, mm -hmm. but he can't hold greens. Mm -hmm. And what he had done is, he was missing the golf ball left, the root cause was the club face, mm -hmm. and then he naturally got bored of the ball going left, so he started to shift his path mm -hmm. out to the right, and then started to put the ball further and further back in his stance in an effort to avoid it going left. Fixing an error with an error exactly. with another error. <laughs> and then it just started getting lower and lower and lower and he was hitting the bottom of the screen. Yeah, yeah. So what we did was I looked at his grip to start with. Mm -hmm. You could see his club face was way too closed. Correct. His right hand grip, right, his left hand grip was okay. It was medium to a little bit strong, I would say. Yep. But his right hand holding it a lot in the palm 
Okay. And the right hand is very underneath. The so cup. let's call this like a down in the fingers here with yep. the average professional, right? We would see that it would kind of look like this. Yeah. And this gentleman from this angle relative to his club face up here was almost correct clubbing it like this, right? So like palm pointing towards the sky, right hand down the side of the shaft, thumb was almost down the side of the shaft there versus mm -hmm. being a little bit more centered and on top. Mm -hmm. Now that did a few things, obviously changed his right arm alignment, mm -hmm. but at the top of the backswing, like you said earlier, his wrist angles and his club face aren't matching up. Mm. So his start direction was constantly going to be to the left, and then like we said, he added some errors that moved over that, trying to fix it by shifting the path and everything. Yeah. So what I did was, I actually changed his right hand grip first before mm -hmm. moving his ball position, mm -hmm. educated on where the hands need to be, for his right hand to get into the correct position. Do you have like a drill or an exercise that you get players to follow? It was, it was a real simple drill um, and it had a, a big influence. So I actually just got him to take his right hand off and simply let it relax and hang. Mm. And what you'll notice is as your right hand relaxes there, it starts to point inwards. It does, yeah. From there, what he was originally doing was he would turn his hand there, his elbow would start to come forward mm -hmm. and he was putting his right hand on under. I actually just got him to feel that his right hand relaxes and then just moves towards the grip. And then what that done is, we've got his forearm aligned, and we've got his right hand on the club properly. And then just to gripping it in the fingers, he got that quite quickly. Just, if you can put them in there, then as you put your hand over. Yeah. And then another little thing I told him was actually grip pressure to keep them feeling equal, right yeah. and left yeah. hand. Perfect. And then from there, that was it. Yeah. So uh, there's, that's one of, that's a great way to do it. And just for the guys at home so they can see is that, uh, if nearly every single one of you went like this, right, and you went up into your address position, you can see that the inside of my elbows are kind of facing yep. uh, normally out, right? Uh, very rarely would you have someone here. Now, depending on your flexibility and mobility, of course there's going to be variations with that, but across a range of all professional golfers, you would generally see that these would tend to be more out than in. Yep. Now, what does that straight away look like? It's going to encourage in the golf swing, yep. exhibit A. So when your elbow creases are out within reason, yep. and then you place your hands on top of the club, yep. specifically for this drill, this exercise the right hand um, it's it's a great way of doing it right because if I'm here and I'm playing dead and let's say you just put your hand even your hand on your thigh now come to think of it and if you look at my right elbow I'm not gonna do that by doing that it's nice and relaxed hands on the thigh and just swing that thing in so it comes on top yeah. little reference point that you can always use there is you just look at the gap between the uh, the thumb and the index and that can just come for someone who's had it underneath here so it just looks a little bit more towards the center line of your body yeah yeah. Now, uh, I do a slightly different thing, which also works incredibly well, which would be a good bit of a two for one exercise here, is that I get them to actually take it up in front of them because when they're up in front of them, they can actually feel like it naturally gets a little bit deeper down in their hand as yeah. well. And then they put their hand on top. Now, a lot of players, when they do this, they go, it feels weak. I feel like I'm gonna let the let club go. go. Yeah. Now, let's have a quick discussion about the difference between holding the golf club securely, right? and then having too much tension yeah. in the arms and the shoulders and the neck and you're vibrating over the ball because you're so angry, right? Uh, we see every athletic sport and it's one of the most common sort of questions you get from players like, how tight do I hold the grip? Yeah. Well, think about when you play tennis. When you're playing tennis, you don't really think about grip pressure, correct? Yeah. It's like, let's not let this thing fly out of my hand. <laughs> So unless, unless your opponent's being exactly, yeah. exactly, maybe we should go. So <laughs> then from there, you also need the the ability to to move your wrist around, yeah. right? Create some mobility. So one of the best exercises you can do, which we were just discussing there, is that once you've got up and you've got your right hand on, you can do this, guys, right? You move the club around in circles above you and pump your arms. If your grip is not slipping, that is the right grip Correct. pressure, right? So we want a secure hold without too much tension in the elbows and the wrists, yeah. that's key, that's key. Because so many players are out there trying to go stiff arm Steve throughout the golf swing and that just causes too much tension, right? Yeah. So uh, great exercise there with the right hand getting placed on top. Now mm -hmm. jump in here and what I want you to do is I want you to kind of talk to me about the initial shots that we saw with this guy because yep. of course what happens, he changes grip slightly, he goes this feels weird and the ball goes straight to the right a mile out to yeah. the right. And then you just educated them, well, you've been compensating for a very closed club face for a period of time. Yeah. And that doesn't mean you're gonna throw a whole bunch of other unnecessary information for him at this stage, because one thing is enough for this gentleman to work on at a time. Uh, but just educating him that the process of improvement, right, it does take a while for these things to embed. It's not like you start 
the guitar for the first time, you know how to play a very basic song, then you go to a really difficult song and go, oh my god, I could get the basic song, yeah. why can't I get the difficult song? Yeah. I've become a worse guitarist. Well, no, all we're doing is improving your motion overall so you can raise the level of your potential. And at the beginning, you're going to struggle with the contact, probably the direction, uh, but it's our job as coaches, right? to educate the players that Correct, on improve the, the process, yeah. is, improvement is challenging. And you say that you always sit down at the beginning of the lesson, right? you spend time getting to know the player, managing yeah. their expectations, and then you do short swings, don't you? Yeah. Slow swings, and then you build up. And if this player with that grip change was then all of a sudden just to do a full swing with everything else that he's been compensating, yeah, yeah you probably would hit me. Yeah. But those small swings over a period of time, things begin to embed and start to match up, right? Correct. So for the purpose of this, let's just hit a couple, right? And I want you to really, really close your grip off. So it's right under there, almost recreating the feel. And just do what feels like a straight swing. Now, obviously, you're a professional golfer, so you're going to be up to manage it. Hit, hit a shot? Yeah, yeah, just a little half for me. And what's going to happen? We're going to see that ball, come on, get lucky, go all the way down the path because what happened at the moment of impact is that grip and that was the only thing you really changed there, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Was so highly affected by that trail hand. Now what I want you to do is I want you to move and go through a little drill that we did. Let's do your drill with your hands on the thigh and then bring that thing in. Right Perfect. Right over. Yep. And same then just make swing. the same swing. Perfect. You can see straight away that start line has changed. Yeah. For a little chip shot, that was absolutely perfect. And to a, for a period of time, it is okay if this player does exaggerate these things. He yeah. moves this thing way around. But from that position, if he's always going under, it's just very difficult to manage, isn't it? Correct. Anything else that you did before the end of the list? So similar to what you just said there, I actually got him to try and overdo the grip slightly on those chip shots. Because yes. immediately, as soon as he put it on, he said, this just feels awful. Mm -hmm. So I said, actually, go a bit past it, and then we can soften it up with your right hand. His ball flight started to push out to the right. Mm. And then we could start to work on his ball position. Because he had had his ball position so far back yep. to try and protect his hook. After he got used to it, the right hand grip, I just gently started to move his ball position a bit more up in his stance, and then that got rid of the shot going to the right. He started to hit it straighter and a lot higher. Yeah, and this is a very important note in itself, right? <coughs> the brain remembers the best and worst of everything. It yeah. doesn't remember the middle. And whenever you make a change, because it feels uncomfortable, the fixed scarcity mindset of nearly every person in this world kicks in. And they go, I remember those amazing shots with my old oh, swing, my yes, old grip. Yes. Oh my God, I just want to hit those again. I just want to be a little bit more <laughs> consistent. But everyone forgets about the absolute mess in the middle, yeah. right? Which is the majority. That's so true. Look at your consistency. Sure. Beginner golfers have had a hole in one, and there are professional golfers who have never had a hole in one. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've got you. So, <laughs> from there, when it comes to embedding these changes, it's going to feel uncomfortable. You're probably going to hit worse shots at the beginning. Um, but if you stick through these changes, that's the reason that you come here and get a, a lesson off a great coach like yourself you. uh, in this controlled environment where you're able to work on these, hit small shots, then build up that will expedite this process of improvement to a point where it begins to feel natural yeah. next time you go out on the golf course. And I suppose that's one thing I'll mention about hitting indoors, which is such a great uh, avenue or a vehicle for improvement for a lot of players, is it removes the course element. Yeah. So when the players are out on the course, it's too much noise, their friends are in the air, and hitting inside just is a wonderful way to do it. Yeah. yeah.